Here to give us some valuable insight into some of the psychology at the play is Dr. Carol Lieberman, a, psych a psychiatric specialist and a forensic expert. So, Doctor, when we look at what is happening right now, for example, in Portland, as we were just saying, 60 straight nights now of unrest in that city. I mean, that's a pretty remarkable number, especially when you see exactly what this unrest is. And I want to be clear, we're not just talking about protests or demonstrations. We're talking about some activists wanting to burn down this courthouse that's in the city of Portland. So what do you make of this situation? Is this just pent up anger from the coronavirus lockdowns or is there more to this? Surely some of it can be explained by the pent up anger uh, of the lockdowns and of a fear of mortality, facing your own mortality and fear of death. But um, I call it animal farm. I think one of the biggest reasons why we are seeing many animal farms or many chazes uh, popping up all over the place is because the original Seattle chaz was allowed to go on for three weeks. And just like an animal farm, George Orwell's animal farm, they chased the farmer, Mr. Jones, off the farm. Uh, in Chaz, they chased the police off the out of their precinct, and they're doing that same kind of thing in all of these little spot, hot spots all over the United States with very little uh, stopping them. And I think that's an interesting point, because even when we were looking in the Chaz or the CHOP, whatever they ended up calling it, uh, what they ended up doing away with, they wanted to get rid of police, they wanted even to get rid of paramedics who weren't allowed in, but then what they did is they formed their own hierarchical structure in a way. They had their leader, Raz Simone, they had their own police forces who uh, d responded directly to him, did whatever they said. They essentially formed their own society, the very type that they were looking to do away with. They were even creating barriers around the whole uh, community to begin with. So what does this say really about the human nature of this situation and what people are actually looking for? Well, you know, again, this is just like what happened at Animal Farm. Originally, Old Major, the pig, uh, wise old pig, you know, gave this very fervent speech and got all the pigs and all the other animals to go along and the, uh, with the idea of the overthrow of the oppressor and so on. And they did start at the beginning, you know, uh, talking and trying to form their own society. They had their own rules. They had a rule, for example, all animals are equal, which ended up being some animals are more equal than others. They took over the farm, uh, Jones's farm in the end, and became like humans, just like the people who are now doing these, these protests. I, I don't want to call them, pro they're not protests anymore. Not peaceful protests, these riots, these looting, this this anarchy. Um, it's the same thing. They, they are, there are many different agendas, really, underneath all of that. And um, they're, they are replacing what they want to say are oppressors with their own, in, in their own groups. Mm. They are forming their oppressors, and then they are fighting amongst themselves. But um, this is, you know, this is, of course, the real Mr. Jones. I mean, you know, it's uh, the big secret, right, is that the real Mr. Jones, the real people that these radicals in these groups who have taken over the protests want to get rid of is Trump. Hmm. And, you know, this all does speak to this concept of a mob mentality, if you will, kind of the minority of individuals on certain topics dictating the conversations, the actions that come after that, the loudest voices in the room, if you will. And it's something that I don't think is just exclusive to these protests, for example. I think we can also look at so-called cancel culture, what's going on right now, where a loud group of voices uh, conduct different movements online in order to try to hurt someone in some regard, either whether it's their job or just embarrass them, something like that. But it's also the polarization in this country. People like being in their little ecosystems, if you will, their own type of environments where they don't receive pushback. What is the cause of this? Is it social media? Is it economic disparagement? What really plays a role in all this that we're seeing right now? Or is it something that isn't that different? We just have more visual access to it. Well, you know, of course, the protesters, the original peaceful protesters at the very beginning, um, wanted us to believe, and yes, it was true that that it started, uh, in a sense, because of uh, the mur the murder of George Floyd. Yeah. But it has gone so far past that. Um, it's not about that. It's really about it's about destroying the country, and. Um, and, you know, again, a lot of this did start with the facing our own mortality with coronavirus, um, people feeling like people becoming self-destructive, people, um, you know, the fear, actually, fear is a big element of it. Not only fear of going into these mobs, protecting the statues, for example, uh, or the couple in St. Louis, you know, of course, fear. But it's, it's also, it's not only the fear of coronavirus, but it's the fear of, of death, ultimately, and wanting to take control of one's own death. Like fear, you know, it's like nothing left to lose. Hmm. You know, 
people become super violent or do whatever they, anarchistic, do whatever they want when they feel there's nothing left to lose, like when people commit suicide, when there's nothing left to lose. And that's basically what's happening all over the country. And the phrase, nothing left to lose, that's a scary one because when someone doesn't have anything to lose, as you were saying, they have no problem with burning down the entire system, whatever it may be. So let me ask you this simple question. Do we get past this or is this something that is going to become the norm? Yeah. Well, we have got to muster up and get past it. I mean, of course, uh, one way is through the National Guard coming in, and then it's just uh, so unbelievable. You know, we have gone what I call corona crazy. Um, the coronavirus started it, and people are making these rash decisions. They're not really thinking things through, like defund the police, of course, is one great example of that. Um, and, and, you know, we, we have to somehow get back from the edge and realize that we need to... to to save our nation. And, you know, of course, when when police are being told to stand down, for example, and we see them standing there or walking away with their tails behind between their legs, it's so hard for just average people to either do something, you know, physical, like protect statues or do something to speak out. Like, even now, when I speak out, I know people are going to think, oh, she must be racist because I'm saying I'm not racist. Um, this isn't about racism. That's the point. No, and in fact, that allegation is used to avoid having the conversation that you and I are having right now. I mean, when we talk about uh, what's happening on the streets, it's a minority of people that are carrying out these actions. An uh, overwhelming majority of Americans want peace, order, stability. They want to be able to go out in their communities and not worry about uh, their small business being burned down or their local police station being burned down. The majority of Americans are on the side of peace and justice, and I think that is something that we do need to remember as we're covering this topic as well, because it does bring a sense of security a little bit to understand understanding that people are generally good and what we're seeing on our TVs a lot of times is for ratings as well. But Dr. Lieberman, I appreciate you coming on tonight, breaking down this situation and the unrest all across the country. Thank you.